I certainly came from a background of eating disorder. And then I went through no, a, years and years of chronic dieting. Yep. Um, and when I moved into this space, the satisfaction factor was actually really fun because it gets you to tune into what you're actually wanting. Yep. So if it's like, I'm, well, it's a cold day. So I'm really wanting something like a soul food that's really warm and soothing. Or oh, Vanessa, maybe it's like, it's a cold I know, day today. So this is, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, or is it a summer day where I'm like, I really want just something cold? Or am I wanting something sour or crunchy? Mm. And it is so exciting because no longer am I kind of checking an app to go like, am I allowed to have this? The question is, what do I actually feel like? Yeah. Um, and, and people I think are scared that, well, I'll just want to eat chocolate all the time. And I'm like, no, you won't mm. like, think about that for a minute. Do you mm. actually think for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks all damn day, every day you want chocolate? It doesn't, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. Um, but then respecting your fullness this is a big part that can take some time because you you probably see this in your clinical practice of we are so disconnected from our bodies yeah we live from the neck up yeah and so lots of women i work with they don't even know what hunger and what fullness feels like mm. because they've disconnected mm. and that might be from trauma that might be, that's the way they learned to cope in their family was mm. to kind of disconnect from their bodies and emotional experience. Um, and so this is one of my favorite parts is seeing women, as I say, come back home to their bodies mm. and really get to know what this feels like. Mm, that's um, number seven is coping with emotions with kindness, um, respecting your body movement. So this is like a really beautiful part of intuitive eating too, is what is underneath your kind of relationship to body movement and exercise. Yeah. Um, and how do we create happiness and health in that space? Mm. Um, That's really cool. And then honoring your health with gentle nutrition. Yes. And so there is a nutrition component. One of the things we talk about is there's no moral value to food. So a donut is not bad and make, doesn't make you a bad person. And an apple is not good and doesn't make you a good person. Mm. Um, so we kind of unpack, there's no moral value to food, but there is some nutritional stuff that we want to consider. And this is the framework that I teach in the group. And it's, it's so exciting um, mm, because I brilliant. see people move from this like rigid world of dieting to freedom. 